Uh, we're going to be talking about awarding behavior and altering businesses. And it's uh, because of the first part that I get to be able to talk about the second part, which is uh, very cool stuff. I'm going to start off with a video, which is the first time I've ever tried to do this in a slide. So uh, it may or may not work. We'll see. There are many ways to earn credit in the DMA Friends program. Activity codes are available in various places around the museum, at programs, in galleries, and special hidden codes may occasionally be distributed by DMA staff. These codes may be entered at any DMA Friends kiosk, or you can text the codes if you have linked your mobile phone to your DMA Friends account. It is a fun way to track your visit at the DMA while earning credit. The museum has also created bunches of activities called badges that are rewarded to friends who really plug in and make the DMA a vibrant place to be. Badges can give you new ideas about ways to use the museum that you've never thought of before. Badges are earned when you participate in activities listed in the badge descriptions. You can earn the insomnia badge when you visit five DMA late nights in one year, or the grand tour badge by visiting four specific galleries in the DMA. We will periodically add new badges to the DMA Friends program, so check back when you're in the museum. Earning badges and credit unlock special rewards like free tickets to special exhibitions, lectures, behind-the-scenes tours, discounts on shopping and dining, and access to exclusive experiences at the museum. Earn enough credits and you can spend the night at the DMA or tour the museum's art storage. You use credit to claim rewards, but you will always keep your badges. When you redeem rewards at the DMA, a voucher will be printed at the kiosk where you signed in. Each reward is unique, and each voucher will have printed instructions that explain how to claim the reward. On your next visit to the DMA, stop by the kiosks to become the nearest DMA friend. Start earning credit and redeem rewards. So that was a pretty cool technology stack. I think we can all agree. Um, and I'm going to start my presentation with a bit of heresy. We're going to not talk about WordPress for the first several minutes here. So bear with me. We're going to get around to WordPress <laughs> in a bit. Uh, they had a lot going on, right? We, we saw this is DMA, is Dallas Museum of Art. They're based in, surprise, Dallas, Texas. And they are a very large facility. They bring in. Um, live exhibitions, they bring in <laughs> traveling artists, they have lots of things for people to see and do. And until recently, uh, they were funded entirely by people paying to go and see these things. And they started this program called DMA Friends. And what they did after introducing this is they eliminated the paid admittance to the museum. Not completely, you can still give them money, they'll, they'll take your money, but you can now <laughs> go and visit the Dallas Museum of Art completely for free because you're giving them a lot more information than you would get if they were just giving them your money, uh, like your name and your phone number and your email address uh, and your zip code. The only thing that's required in that is your email address <coughs> so that you actually have an account that you can sign into. And the way this DMA Friends program works is they have these iPad kiosks stationed throughout the museum. Um, they have some when you first get there, so if you've never registered before, you can register. Um, and also so you can check in before you go and experience the museum. And uh, throughout this, if you didn't catch it from the video, you earn digital badges <coughs> by exploring the museum, by doing things that you had already set out to do in the first place. And now you get rewarded for doing this. So if you show up to several late night events in a row, it's a, you get the insomnia badge. Um, and uh, you get badges just for showing up on a regular basis. You get points every time you check in. And then you can turn those points into real world things like free coffee, free parking. Uh, if you collect enough, you get a free private tour of the museum, you and some friends uh, from one of the curators, which is really awesome that they can just give that out. And it also allows you to access their events, which used to only be available to their paying, uh, they're called DMA partners. Um, things like 100 bucks a year. I'm guessing 
Uh, a lot of you have art museums or, or civic things like this where you can pay them for an annual membership and that grants you access to the things that they do throughout the year. That's what the DMA partner program was. Um, by becoming a DMA friend, you now have access to those things as well that used to only be available to you at the $100 tier. Um, and so one of the major benefits of this is they increased visitor participation. They, they pulled down a lot of paywalls uh, and they got more people in the door experiencing what they do, which is exactly what they want to have, right? Um, curiously, they also started getting more money. Funny how that works, right? You get more people in the door, you start getting more money, even though you start charging people as much up front. And all of this revolved around the idea of giving people these digital badges and points, completely made up fake things. <laughs> someone, someone took some time to make some pictures and put it on a screen, and now people are showing up to participate in the museum because they get some flickering pixels. That's crazy. Um, and uh, let's talk about the technology stack for a minute. I mentioned they have iPads all throughout the museum, right? Um, some cool things that they did is they would uh, automatically award you badges or points if you checked in at certain spots or at certain times of the day. So if you show up to one of their evening events and check in, the only thing you could possibly be doing is going to that evening event. So they automatically register you for it, um, which is just very clever, first of all. Uh, minimizes the amount of things that you have to punch in on a screen, which is very important because lots of people are trying to come through this very frustrating experience, right? I'm sure you've all used a device where you have to touch, and it's not very pleasant, especially when you have people lining up behind you. So um, they did some clever things there. They also set it up so that you could interact via SMS. You saw in the video, you could send a text to a phone number, and it would be the same as registering or, or punching in a code at the, the iPad kiosk. Uh, the neat thing about that is that those, the SMS only worked via certain hours of the day. So uh, if you try and collect all these codes and then text them from home and text them every single day, it's not going to work. Uh, it only works when you're uh, there during these certain hours, during these certain days of the week. Um, and then they've got printers at certain kiosks where you can take the points that you earn and turn them into rewards and they print out a receipt for you. So you can take it to the coffee shop and get coffee, you can take it to the gift shop and get discounts on their, uh, their knickknacks and books and, and things. Um, you can get your parking reimbursed. Um, you can get event tickets, right? Um, and so they've got all kinds of elaborate things wrapped in this. It's fairly sophisticated. Um, so this is, this is where I want you to, to be thinking when we're talking about giving people achievements. They fundamentally altered how their business works because they realized if we give people made of fake badges, they're going to show up and start giving us money so that we can keep going to business. They got to give presentations at <coughs> certain Smithsonian conferences, national level museum, to talk about how they were revolutionizing how not only their museum work, but all of the other museums uh, in their collection. And aside here, if you don't know this, most museums, um, like most libraries, exist as part of a collective because you can do a lot more things as a group than you can do individually. Like the fact that you have lots of amazing speakers here, not me, but everybody else, because all of you were here and said, I want to come to this event if you bring in speakers. Um, right? Power in numbers. And so uh, the DMA raised money. They paid for the development of this platform. And then they got other museums in the area to join on board. And so everybody benefited. And so when they went into the second round, a couple of other museums kicked in to fund that piece. And so again, rising tide raised all boats. Everybody wins because they're all working together and they built this really cool, slick thing. Um, I could talk quite a bit more about this, but the important thing to remember is uh, you're signing in on an iPad, you're getting badges, you're getting points, you can turn the points into real world things, and it doesn't cost you anything. Um, and then, yet yeah, they, they make more money. Uh, another similar program is the YMVP program. Uh, this is put on by a small gym uh, in New York named the YMCA. Um, some of you may have heard of them. Uh, and uh, they exist all around the country, of course, but uh, specifically in New York, they were piloting this MVP program, uh, which stands for uh, Mild to Vigorous Physical Activity, I think. I forget what the acronym is. <coughs> but the idea was to encourage all of the students coming in through their programs to actually 
participate and do things. They have a lot of kids in the inner city <coughs> um, who are looking for things to do, who have memberships in the Y, um, and they wanted to kind of guide them through a more directed approach to physical activity. And the way they did this prior to this experience that they have here, um, this pseudo iOS app, um, was pencil and paper. So they have coaches with a clipboard and a piece of paper to represent each student. And they would come in and they would check the box for, I, you know, I spent five minutes doing jump rope, I spent 15 minutes lifting weights, this, and then they would um, get rewarded on a uh, physical <coughs> legacy leaderboard like that. And with this, you can see here they have a timeline that's showing you what everybody is doing when they complete an activity, when they earned a badge, when they checked in, uh, things like that. Uh, and it encouraged them to participate and create their own workouts. So in a couple slides from now, we'll see uh, a little bit about how this one works. And essentially, they have a bunch of pre-recorded workouts that you can follow um, that would say, like, you know, do this, then do this, then do this, and then you get a badge. And then they would encourage you to create your own workouts. So you can check in and say, well, I did this, and then I did this, and this. And you're adding these activities basically to your shopping list. And then at the end, you can say, you know what, save this as a playlist. I'm going to come back and do this again <laughs> next Wednesday. Um, and not only are you participating in the workouts that were prescribed by the YMCA, but you can come up with your own and then repeat those as you come back again and again. Uh, and then get other people participating in those. And then you get badges. Uh, I'm going to call them meta badges, when you create a workout and when someone else completes one of your workouts, uh, which is pretty cool. So you're getting badges even for other people doing activity. Uh, and like I said, you, you're <laughs> getting badges for these activities that you're doing. Uh, and then they have a leaderboard for points ranking because who doesn't want to be at the top of the leaderboard, right? The best way to get a bunch of high school kids to participate and, and actually care is to say, you can be on this giant screen when you walk in in the number one spot for having the most points. They had to rethink that one a bit because in the first iteration, uh, and I know all the inside of I helped build these. Um, in the first iteration, they didn't want us to spend a whole lot of time limiting how many hours someone could, or how many minutes someone could allot to a task. So you could come in and say like, oh, I did an hour on this, I did two hours on that. So a kid could check in and say that he did four hours of activity and leave and just maintain being first on the leaderboard forever. <laughs> that lasted about a week. And they pulled it down and we put in so that you have to check in, the clock starts, and then you check out, and then you can reassign all of those minutes to match up with what you actually did. And you can never actually use more minutes than you were there. Uh, and then they also took the leaderboard away from being on the home screen and buried it back in your stats. So you only see it after you finish logging your activity. And it turns out that was all they needed to curb people from gaming the system winning. Uh, and then, so what they realized is the, the main point is to get this timeline, to put this at the forefront, to see here's what everyone else is doing uh, and what you should do as well. And they, they did some really cool stuff with their kiosk. It wasn't just like iPads sitting on a desk. They actually made uh, like they bought a store kiosk and they put decals all around it and uh, the thing that you stand on when you use the kiosk is actually a giant badge printed out on a, on a big old vinyl sticker. Uh, so it's a really cool experience. Uh, and just like DMA Friends, as we've been saying, they, they utilized iPad kiosks. Um, the cool thing about both of these that I forgot to mention is the way that you would sign into these, because it's very cumbersome to type in an email and a, a password, right? Um, both of these places had printed out uh, ID cards. And so we utilized the camera so you could sign in and then hold up your ID card. It would scan the barcode and sign you in, and then you're good to go. Um, here's a, a bit of a look at how it works. So uh, once you sign in, this is the screen that you see. So you can pick one of these pre-made playlists. And if you're already actively working on one, some of them span <coughs> multiple different sessions, you can see <coughs> progress. Um, and so you can basically say, I'm going to do these things today. And then you go out and do those things, and then you come back, and you can say, you know, I spent this much time on each of these things, or I also did this, but I didn't do that. Um, and then when you've logged your time, you get this nice little look at your stats, so you can see how much time you spent today, and how it breaks down across the different kinds of activity, cardio, etc. cetera. Um, and then you can see the badges that you've earned today, and the challenges that you completed today. Um, 
and then you can see it for the week and for the month. I think there's three views that you can get. Um, and the fun thing about this is there's sometimes badges that you didn't know existed. They're hidden badges. So you could get like one day of basketball for logging total over the course of your account, 24 hours worth of playing basketball. Um, and then you can see all the badges that you've earned and the ones that you haven't, at least the ones that they publicize that exist. Uh, and then on the community tab, which I don't have a screenshot for, it's where they had the leaderboard and the other activity stream actually logged in. Um, so really cool stuff. Uh, and then a third one that I want to give you here for our um, case studies. Uh, I regrettably don't have a screenshot for it. This is one that didn't have the staying power that the company thought it would. Um, so this is a, a somewhat sad case study. But I'm including it both because it was a really cool project and also to show you that it's not always going to succeed. Right? You might think you have this awesome idea and you get rolling on it and then it falls flat. So it happens. Two out of three of these worked, and they were awesome. This one was awesome while it lasted. This was called Scout, and it was for Pierce County uh, Libraries. And um, <coughs> what they basically wanted to build was a summer reading program on steroids. So get all of the kids in the area participating in the library in the summer months when they would otherwise be taking naps and watching TV. And uh, with this, they had book reviews and scavenger hunts and um, interactive photo submissions, and uh, what they were secretly doing was teaching kids how to use the library and how to engage their brains, even in a self-directed sense during the summer. Uh, so the scavenger hunts uh, throughout the library, they were telling you, like, go find this fiction book. Where would you look? And so you learn how the Dewey Decimal System works, or um, uh, a more apropos version would be, how do you uh, find these things via Google, right? Um, and so they had digital scavenger hunts as well. So um, there would be links placed on other sites, partners of theirs. So when you found the thing, you would click the link, it would bring you back to their site, and you would earn an achievement for having done that action. Um, the, the really cool part of this one, um, in my mind, was the ISBN lookup integration. So they might have a, a rather amorphic um, achievement, like read a fictional book about dogs. And you would punch in a book that you read, um, either via title or the ISBN, and it would look up uh, one of the ISBN services, what the book was, try and find some keywords that matched what they wanted, and if it was a fictional book about dogs, you would earn that achievement. Uh, which is just very cool, I think. Um, and then the part that made this uh, really work is that they integrated it with Buddy Press. Oh, I just spoiled a bit of the surprise. Uh, so as you were completing these activities, uh, it was showing up in an activity stream, just like on the YMCA, so people could see what you were doing. But unlike YMCA, you could also participate. So you could see that someone submitted a photo of a diorama that they had made for a book that they read, and then comment on it. Um, you could see that they had just earned the Midnight Reader badge for the sixth time in a row, and you could congratulate them on it. Um, and then you, as you're doing things, you'd get notifications every time you earned something in near real time when you unlocked it, even as you're moving through different parts of their website, um, which is just darn cool. Uh, unfortunately, they only had enough funding to run this for a single summer, and then they had to pull it down because they didn't have enough momentum to keep staff uh, running it, which is a bummer. But I'm glad that they got to do it at least for one summer and, and demonstrate that um, it was a viable exercise. So what do these sites have in common, other than me making them and knowing how cool they are? Uh, they're all actually powered by WordPress. So everything that I showed you here was WordPress through and through, the whole way. Even the, the iOS apps. The, the app part of the iOS app was simply a wrapper that removed the browser controls. And in the case of the YMCA and the, the DMA, uh, we tapped into the camera just so that we could read the barcode to log people in. Um, so we had a, an iOS team make that part, and all the barcode scanner did was it would, it would recognize it using an open source library called, I think, Z, Z something or other for scanning barcodes, Z barcode maybe. And uh, <laughs> it would hit an endpoint on our server, and uh, it would it pass in the data, and we'd authenticate them and log them in based on them actually being in, in a physical location, so we don't need their password, because we know we could be reasonably assured that they're good folks. 
And uh, I would not recommend doing that in like a production environment where you don't have control over, okay, they're literally at this physical location. Um, anyway, the rest of it is all WordPress. And the achievement piece was all run by FadgetOS, which was a plugin that I got to work on quite a bit. This is really cool stuff. Um, if you are looking to do achievements in any capacity on your website, there are lots of solutions. I'm not going to tell you that this is the one that you want to use, but I would recommend that you check out BadgeOS. I would recommend that you check out achievements and just search for awarding badges via WordPress. You'll find three or four. Um, but the two that people use most often are probably going to be BadgeOS or achievements. And what's nice about these is that it's extremely simple for you to set up achievements on your site. Uh, BadgeOS, I can speak about from experience because I helped write it, and I know <laughs> there are lots of extensions that exist for it. I also want to preface, um, these examples were from two or three years ago. I've been sitting on this talk for a while, letting it marinate. Um, all of the examples are still relevant, um, but if you go and look at things and see, like, oh, this is two years old, I promise it's still, the code is okay. Uh, I wouldn't say that if I'm looking at it, right, I'd be like, oh, gosh, who wrote that? But generally, like, it's okay, even though it's a couple years old. It, it all still works the way it was designed. And the screenshots look pretty terrible on the projector, but what you'll see is this is fairly familiar WordPress UI, right? On the left here, we've got the Badge OS menu that it adds. We can see a bunch of different achievement types that exist. Um, and it's just the, the WordPress posts interface. You click and make a new one, or you can edit one. There's one set of meta fields where you can specify details about the badge. How many times can it be earned? Um, must the steps be completed sequentially, or can they be completed in any order? Or is it earned maybe not by completing steps, but by submitting a photo, or by um, filling out a nomination? Is it admin awarded only, so it's an achievement that can only be given by you, the site owner? Um, things like that. Uh, and then this bottom part here, which is just train wreck pixels, um, is the UI for creating steps. So. <coughs> You add a step and you specify what the step is, like they must um, comment on any post one time. And then another one is they have to earn all of achievements of the type level. So I've got an achievement type called levels, like level one, level two, level three. If you've earned all of those, then you've completed the step. And so maybe this is uh, an achievement called trophy. And so we give you a trophy for earning all levels. The nice thing about Badge OS that the other achievement platforms don't have is you get to define the semantics. So you're not necessarily giving people badges, you might be giving them, you may be giving them badges, but you might be giving them levels, or trophies, um, or quests that you would complete. Um, so you get to define all of the verbiage that gets shown to you on the front end. And even for these steps, you can't really tell from the screenshot, but um, it will pre-populate what the label might be for the step, like comment on any post one time, but then you can change it completely, like um, comment on at least one post. You, it's freeform, you type it, whatever you want that step to be. Uh, and you can set an image up for what the, the achievement should look like when they earn it. Um, this pairs up with a service called Credly, which is pretty slick. I'll get to you in just a second. Um, and they have a badge builder. So right inside of WordPress, you can click and design a badge. You can pick from, I think, six different shapes um, with six different border styles with an unlimited number of icons because it connects to the noun project, which has like, thousands of different icons for describing every different kind of noun. Uh, and then you set all the colors, and you save it out, and boom, you've got a badge for whatever it is that you want. So even if you're not a designer, you can design unique badges for every achievement that you want to award. Um, and uh, you hit publish, it goes on the front end, and to that, people can start getting achievements. There are add-ons to tie into things like BuddyPress, so when they join a group or when they get a friend or they can get badges for that for, for showing up and participating. Um, and the, the way it works, this is for you developers in the room, uh, it's all just hooks. So there are uh, a couple of filters that you can use for redefining what kinds of steps exist in the drop-down menu here as you're, as you're being able to select what people do. Um, and then what it's listening for in the actual rules engine is for a hook to fire. So like the very first example here, comment on any post, we're listening for the, the save comment hook to fire in WordPress. And when it fires, um, we look to see are there any achievements, any steps that should be awarded based on this hook firing. Okay. Um, 
and then it walks through. Now that we've earned this, has the user unlocked any achievements? No? Okay. Or yes? Okay, they've given, we give them this achievement. Now that they've earned this achievement, do we give them anything else beyond that, right? Like maybe they just got level three, that means they get a trophy. Uh, and it just works through all of that, and all it is at its core is hooks. You, you modify one filter to say, I want to listen to this, and then you add a hook at the other end to do that thing, and bad US will just listen on both ends and automatically monitor things. It's very neat. Um, the example for the, the digital scavenger hunt that the library system used, uh, we, we just had a custom URL endpoint uh, query string. So if you click a link that has that query string in it, it brings you back. Um, optionally, we can check the refer to make sure that you're coming from the page that we know the link to be on. And if the refer matches, then the query string is present. Ta-da, we've just triggered the, the whatever hook that would then award the step. Uh, and it's that. It's very, very, very simple on the other side. Um, if you're a developer and you want to extend it to track other things. Can we pause for just a second? You had a question, perhaps, about something. Oh, I was just, I was wondering if there's a public API for the Badge OS stuff? Uh, no, there there are no um, awesome, not like a REST API for Badge OS, right. because it was made a couple of years ago. Um, Credly, the part that it integrates with, um, that is a fully featured API. The, the badge builder piece comes from the API. Uh, the other neat thing about Credly is that it allows people to take the badges from your site off of your site and promote them on Twitter and Facebook and stuff without you doing anything. Um, and the, their idea, uh, Mozilla also has an open badge platform system similar to this. Um, so you can get badges and achievements across a number of sites but have one backpack, so to speak, where all of your badges exist. Um, which is pretty cool. And so you get that out of the box with uh, Badge OS, and um, that means that your badges don't necessarily <coughs> exist in a silo. Um, but no, regrettably, uh, there is no API for it yet, but it's extensible enough that someone enterprising enough could write one. Um, so now that you know that all of these very cool sites were made using WordPress and Badge OS, what can you do with this information? How can you take this to award achievements and, uh, and change businesses, right? Can you come up with an idea that is as fundamentally destructive as doing away with the payment system for a museum and still make money? Well, maybe. Um, so the, the very first thing that you can do with this, right, is increase visitor participation. That's why it worked for the DMA. They netted more revenue by charging less money because they had more people coming in, more people participating, and therefore more people investing in other things than just paying at the door, right? They're investing in the cafe, they're investing in the events that they now have access to that they didn't have before. Uh, and uh, thinking smaller, like if you just want to put this up on your own site, let's say you just you run a blog, you've got a, a nice contingency of readers, you want to get more readers, you want to get them participating more. Maybe you start giving them badges every time they leave a comment. So on the first comment, they get a, Congratulations for coming out of the woodwork. It's badge. Uh, they leave their tenth comment. You give them uh, congratulations for sticking around. Badge. They leave their hundredth comment. You say, "Easy, buddy. Maybe you should start a blog." Uh, right. So you're, you're rewarding them for participating. You're giving them involved, uh, and you're encouraging desired behavior. Right. You want more comments on your posts. You start telling people, "Leave a comment. Get a badge." Uh, and uh, you could build a rewarding training platform, right? If, you're, if your website, if your blog is about instructing people how to do something, let's say that you're running a blog with recipes and you're, you're teaching people like, here's what I make and here's how I made it. Um, and all of a sudden you start adding like a paid component to it, or maybe not even paid, maybe it's free, but you want to <coughs> walk them through the basics, right? You're, uh, you're a parent who's concerned about a child leaving away for college and they have zero cooking skills whatsoever, so you point them at this blog because this blog walks them through how to do all these things. And what you know, this blog also gives out achievements. Every time someone says, I made this recipe, they click a button, they get a badge. Um, or maybe you're running uh, WordPress training for your clients, right? You've got people who, who you really want to learn this stuff. You've given them WP 101. You've got the WP 101 plugin running in their dashboard. So you write a little uh, add-on plugin that listens for things happening in the WP101 plugin, and every time they watch a new video, <coughs> trigger a badge for them. Um, so there's lots of different ways that you can reward them um, within a training platform. Right? 
you could improve local commerce. This was an idea that uh, I didn't get to build, and I was sad about, but the, uh, a chamber of commerce in somewhere wanted to increase people going in the doors of all the businesses that participate in that chamber of commerce. Um, certain towns do this thing. I know in my little podunk town, there was a, a midnight something or other madness, uh, midnight moonlight madness, um, where if you go to all the stores like beyond closing hours, each of them has a special discount, and you can, uh, uh, if you go to more than one, you get like another 20% off of the next one. Like it's a compounding thing, so it's encouraging you to show it more and more and more. The, the idea of turning this into badging is now you're getting them to punch in a code for each place that they enter, and at the end they get a massive discount at, at something, right? Um, I'll leave the specifics up to you. I'm just giving out free ideas here. Uh, and then, of course, you can create a more engaging social site. So you've got a site, the client says, I want to put BuddyPress on there. I want to make my own Facebook. You go, all right, first, we're going to have to add a couple more zeros to this uh, invoice, preferably on the left side of the decimal. <laughs> and uh, then we'll start talking about your idea of making the next Facebook. But for what you want right now, maybe all you need is uh, just the messaging piece of BuddyPress. And maybe the way to encourage people to participate and message each other on your site, you're giving them badges for how many people that they choose to communicate with. Maybe you give them badges every time they join a group. Maybe you give them badges every time um, someone likes something, right? To encourage good behavior, people being generally kind to one another on your site. That's a good thing to reward, and you'll tend to pull back more rewarding users because of that. Um, one of the cool things about Badge OS that it does with the free BuddyPress add-on is every time you get an achievement, it shows up in your activity feed, you being the person participating. Um, and also for, as I just described, um, certain BuddyPress behavior that um, you might want to encourage them to do. Um, I didn't mention this here in my slide, but you could also turn this on for a different LMS, uh, a learning management system. There are two really popular ones called Learn Dash and Sensei. Um, since they buy blue themes. And there are badge OS add-ons that exist for those. I think one of them is paid and one of them is free. And I don't remember which one. Um, Learn Dash is paid. Learn Dash is paid, so I think Sensei is probably free because uh, Learn Dash is a free platform and uh, Sensei is a paid platform, I think is how they worked out that decision. But anyway, um, these add-ons already exist. If you wanted to take one uh, and, and make it for, say, Lifter LMS, which is an up and coming star, and they're doing a lot of really cool stuff. Um, BadgeOS is very easily adapted into that as well. And so now you've got this training platform where you're giving people access to courses and quizzes, and when they complete a quiz, now they can get a badge from BadgeOS, right? So you can build very rewarding training platforms. Um, I could talk for hours about <laughs> this. I'm going to pause now because I've already given you a shotgun blast of information. Um, does anybody have any? Questions for me. Yeah, say you have a membership site with an LMS in there and yeah. you wanted to, instead of selling different levels, you have one level, but you would uh, uh, unlock another membership level with, with badges. Is there a way to do that if they can proceed with the badge OS? After they, can be, uh, after they complete some of the uh, LMS modules, uh, now they have the ability to get this other membership and access to other LMSs with that badge. Cool. So the question, to repeat both for the camera to make sure that I understood it correctly, um, is to say, suppose you're running a membership site that only has a single level of membership. Um, is there a way to, for your members to unlock an additional tier by earning achievements, right? Right, or you can have a membership of multiple levels. Usually you have, hey, if you're a member of level one, they need to buy in level two. What if you don't want them to buy it? You want them to what participate or right. engage it? Um, so I haven't participated in any any project that has done that, but it is definitely feasible. Um, I worked on one a while back where they wanted to take uh, points that a, a person was using from Badge OS and turn it into store credit. So a similar thing could be done here, right? So you, you're using the points as sort of a, a refund on the, the thing and can only be bought by points, might be one way to do it. Um, there are also a lot of helper functions inside of Badge OS. If you're a developer or have one working on the project where you can say, do they have this achievement? And so if they have this achievement, then they can do whatever the next thing is. 
Um, there's nothing out of the box, but um, it could probably be done. <coughs> what else? Ah, so the SMS side of things um, for uh, the DMA, I believe, was Twilio. And so we just wrote a simple PHP connector that would send data to Twilio and listen for data coming back from Twilio. And then we would use that to trigger, I think, just simply do action. Um, so we get a call, folks. So we, we trigger do action with the response that Twilio sends back, the phone number, and then we would use the phone number paired with the user account to know, like, ah, this should go to so-and-so. Um, so the, the Twilio connector piece was a single file. I think it was like 60 or 80 lines total, like 20 here to, to send data out, 20 to get data back, um, and then a couple of lines for the do action, add action to bring it back into the address. Uh, is there an add-on to encourage social sharing? I don't remember. I know that was something that we talked about. Uh, I unfortunately haven't been active in the project for the last two years. Um, and I think, I don't think it got made, so I don't think one exists currently. Um, the way that we talked about making it um, was, uh, there, there is one that exists, but it's completely proprietary for one particular company. They paid for a service that would go out and mine all of the social feeds looking for you know, hashtags and, and specific things, and then when they would uh, assess that the sentiment was pleasant, they weren't saying like, these guys suck. Uh, they would then see if they could match up a person's username <coughs> with the username that was saved in their profile and then award them something. Um, so I don't think one exists currently. I have a question. Yeah. I don't want to stop you from that, but um, with that, the Yeah, so the question is, what happened with the, the staffing issue at the library? I'm not sure of the specifics. I know that they had, they'd gotten a specific grant to run this program, and then by the end of the summer, which is how long it was supposed to last, um, the grant was used up, and they didn't get a renewal to keep it going. So I'm not sure, I don't think they brought on more people, but I think that they needed um, more support from their current staff, more hours, um, things like that, and, and they wanted to build more things. Um, and they couldn't afford it, so they just put it all in. I think so. Yeah, so I think I think their specific issue is that they had, the, the people who were running it had basically a second job. So they hired right to manage the library, now they're managing the library, and uh, managing a website. And they could do one or the other, not both. It's me. Yeah, so in terms of actual management, it's not intense, right? It just takes time. It takes somebody to think through the curriculum of, all right, well, what do we want them to do? Okay, well, that's going to look like this. Like a scavenger hunt, for example, they have to figure out where they're going to send them. They're going to have to hang up um, codes for the person to find and punch in. So they could easily spend a week just thinking through the curriculum. There's 40 hours that the library hadn't budgeted. How did you identify uh that's a good question. How do you identify rewards that people respond to? Specifically, how did I? Uh, that's an easy one. I didn't, I didn't have to do any of that research. I just got to implement it at the end. Um, I can tell you, though, as a person who uses systems, it's very challenging to come up with rewards that they actually care about, right? Um, I think uh, there, there are lots of articles written about gamifying systems to encourage uh, things, and a lot of them make a, really, a lot of really good points. Um, one thing that I did while I was researching this is I just trolled Steam, which is a platform that Valve created, um, which is a brilliant money maker on their part and a really great way to distribute lots of games. But one thing that was really handy to me in this case is they would show the kinds of achievements that you could unlock in these games. You could see there's a certain pattern to all of them. Like, all of them had like get X number of kills, right, for the, the shooters, or find X number of hidden areas. Um, so they were, they were encouraging exploration, and they were encouraging participation, right? Exploration for finding hidden areas, participation for the number of kills, or the style of kills, or for using a certain thing, or behaving in a certain way. And so um, the, I think the first frame of reference to start from is what do I want people to do on my site? How do I want them to use my service? 
what, what do I want that to look like? Because uh, the end goal, right, like, let's go back to my just example of a person who's running a, a, a recipe blog who turns it into instructions for people leaving for college. Right, the end goal there is if they follow these recipes, they'll know how to boil water. They'll know how to <coughs> cook an egg, how to cook spaghetti, how to make garlic, how to do all of these things. So at the end, they could conceivably not only make food, but find groceries. And so how do I know that they do that at the end? Well, I, I award them achievement for making this recipe, and I award them an achievement for uh, saying that they completed this skill. And so your, your goal first is to encourage them to do the things that you want. Right? Trying to get a mouse through a maze, you're putting cheese at the right spot for them to make the right turns. Um, the second frame of reference is what, what is the cheese? So yes, I'm going to achieve them, but what am I going to name the achievement? How, how easy is it going to be to get this first achievement? Because you want it to look kind of like a logarithmic scale, right? They sign it in the first hour, they've got like 15 achievements. They're feeling pumped. The next day they get another five, the next day they get another two, a couple days later they get another two, and then they're just like, it takes longer and longer to get more and more. So you want to get them hooked in first and then continue to, to give them positive reinforcement as they go. Um, I don't know specifically what it looks like, but most of the time it's going to fall either into encouraging exploration and encouraging participation. Uh, any more questions? Just, one just one more. All right. Hope well, it's a good one. No pressure. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm curious about the, the planning process for the achievements themselves and how that how that happened. Like. Um, if you're involved with that, like, how did you did you plan all the achievements first, or build stuff and then do it, or how did that come about? That is a great one to end on. So the question is, what what is involved in the achievement process, and how did it happen? Do we plan the achievements first, or do we build things and then build achievements off of those? Um, and and what sort of thoughts went into that? Um, the achievements came first. So we designed software to solve problems that they already had. In the case of the YMCA, it was how do we get these kids engaged, how do we get them to participate in these specific things. In fact, the, the specific goal for the YMVP was to get people to do the things called the presidential challenge. So uh, 30 minutes of mild to vigorous activity um, per day uh, up to, I think, four days a week. So it's a very low bar, especially for youths. youths. And uh, they built everything else out to, to support that goal. So how can we get kids exercising for 30 minutes a day? Well, it means we need to get at least four different 15-minute activities, or two different 15-minute activities, <laughs> three different 10-minute activities, you know, um, and, and what things pair well together. And so they worked through that. Uh, it was definitely messy in some cases. We found, like, after we started implementing things, like, uh-oh, this achievement conflicts with this one. Because the way Badge West works is when you do a certain activity, it's good for everything. So in this case, the YMCA had very custom activity, right? It's not common and opposed. It's log 30 minutes playing basketball. So we had to do a few different things to track. Um, OK, they've just logged 30 minutes of basketball. And it counts towards all three of these badges. Because we do want them to earn um, the 24 hours of basketball, even though we're also counting the 30 minutes to whatever challenge they're working on. But we don't want them to get that same 30 minutes logged and tracked four times. We need to say, OK, this activity of 30 minutes is done. We'll never count it again, even when we recalculate the badge. Um, and uh, with DMA, they saw we were like, what, what things do we want them to go through? What do we want them to participate in? So uh, everybody figured out what their achievements were and the, the flow of their users first. And then we built the software around it. And then we found out when two things collided, where things like, uh oh. Well, we don't actually want them this one activity to count to both of these things, to count towards either one of these things. We need to set up an exclusion so it can only go to one. Um, so there's some some challenges, but usually the achievements came first, and then the solution to award them came second. Um, if you have any more questions, I'll be around. Uh, I'll either be in a happiness bar, or hanging out. Please feel free to stop me anytime today or tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank for you. Time.